Hello, dear friends and, and, and colleagues. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to share with you what's going on with African swine fever. As you know, it's the, the main threat that never had before in the swine industry, like ASF. Today is the biggest problem that we have because it changes a lot of things. It changes uh, all the swine meat trade, it's changing animal health care, it's changing the future of many things and look like uh, no, no way to uh, stop this particular disease. So we're going to review today with you all this agenda that I prepared for you. The first thing is going to review the global situations and especially the, the economic impact of the disease, as well as I'm going to take a little my glass wall and see if uh, I can tell you what is going to be also in the future. We're going to review uh, the characteristic of African swine fever. What can we do for the control of this terrible disease? What are the key points for ASF control? The surveillance is difficult to do it. The early detections, the contingency plans. We're going to, to, to see how is the situation of the vaccines. We're going to have a future vaccine or not. How far away are we from the vaccine? And finally, what is going to be the future of ASF situations? What I expect that is going to happen in the next four, five years, six years. So uh, at this moment, as you know, is, as I mentioned at the beginning, is the main threat that we have in the global swine industry. Today, ASF is affecting four continents. So, you know, the last one to join this club is uh, Oceania. And it's affecting more than 50 countries and they have seven different epidemiological scenarios. So that means the disease don't have the same behavior in one place or another. There are several differences that are important and I would like to summarize for you. One thing that is important to remind is that at this moment, the disease is affecting areas where are living more than the 78% of the total swine productions. So the 78% of the whole world peaks are in a, a dangerous situations. So that is affecting especially to Asia because it's there where the disease is creating more trouble, higher mortality, and at this moment, as you can see, they reduce the productions quite a lot. And, and this is the situation. China is going down, Vietnam is going down. China already was down for a 44%, almost a 45%. Vietnam 3.19, Russia with 2.9, Philippines with 1.6. In general, the 52% of the total population is really uh, has been in trouble at this moment. So this is uh, the situation and how they are affecting. And especially, you, you can see that the evolution of the world pig meat production in this picture. So you can see how China is going well, like we said before, it's already a 20% less. Over, we have also the same with Vietnam, a little lower, of course, Philippines, etc. So, what is the, the the pork importing countries? What is the countries that, because of that situations, they need to import pig meat already? So, China, as you can see, is the, the number one and importing. But there are other countries that are importing quite well also. All the Asian countries in particular, you can see uh, again Philippines, you have to see, you can see several countries that are already affected. And which are the countries that are taking the opportunity to, to replace and to export with more amount of animals at this moment? We have, as you know, the European Union, we are number one at, the, at this moment. The, the USA is second, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, and, and Chile. These are the five, the five top or the six top countries that are already exporting more. So the, the point here is all these changes, uh, how it's going to take it? It's going to continue? Are we going to continue exporting these countries? Are going to be the decision China for long period of time, etc. So let's see the situations and, and you're going to see what uh, really is uh, uh, currently the situation of ASF. 
We're going to start for Africa, that as you know, has been the, 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 the house where the virus was born and was, and was detected. And we have two different epidemiological uh, scenarios in, in Africa. The first one is in East and South Africa, and the second one is in the West part of Africa. In the West part of Africa, really will be no trouble at all to have a good contingency plan and control. It's going to be very easy. Quite different is the situation in East and South Africa. I'm going to explain you why. As you know, there in Kenya was the first time that Africa swine fever has been described. And in this place, in East and South Africa, we have the 24 different genotypes. So all the different types of ASF viruses are already present in this part of the world. And they have a special and a particular complete situation, very complicated situation. The first one is what we call the selvatic and domestic cycles. And this is because these two wildlife peoples that I show you, this, wild by, uh, this wildlife, the facochero and the woodpecks, these two uh, species, they are infected for African swine fever virus, but never the virus increase in a very high number, the virus titulation. So that means the titer of ASF after infecting these two animals never reach more than 10 to 2. With 10 to 2, these animals don't really suffer the disease as, as African swine fever. They are like tolerant to the disease, but the virus is there. So this, this other, these other vectors that you're going to see here in the picture, this is the Ornithodorus muvata, is the ones that are going to bite these two animals. And they are not only a mechanic vector, they are a biological vector. So that means they're going to replicate the virus and increase the titer of the virus to 10 to 7, 10 to 8. So they again are going to infect it, wildlife and domestic life. So this cycle is very, very difficult to uh, stop because the, the animals, the bush pigs and the facochero, they, they really don't die for ASF. So they keep viremic all the time. So the cycle is completely active. The only way that we can uh, stop that situation will be to protecting facochero and bush pigs with a potential vaccine, perhaps in the near future. The situation in, Afri in Europe is also quite complicated. As you know that the, since 2007 that the virus they start in the Caucasus, they go and spread very quickly through the Russian federations and they infected already well, Ukraine, Belarus, and of course, m uh, several European Union countries. So the last country infected in the European Union was, uh, was uh, uh, Gre Greece in, in 2020, was the last country that was affected here in the European Union, Greece. But uh, you see, we have uh, several countries already involved with ASF. And these uh, scenarios, in the European uh, scenarios, we distinguish two very important different uh, scenarios. The one that is happening in, in the East part, where we have already a very mix of wild boar and domestic pigs involved. So usually our farms with a very low biosecurity, with very easy for the wild boar to jump in, in and there are many uh, family family farms, also, uh, ring, uh, you know, pig ran, running pigs around. So very, very poor biosecurity. So it's a combination of wild boar and, and domestic pigs. In the opposite way is the European Union area, where most of the countries affected already are mainly because of the wild boar. So the infection is mainly in wild boar with sporadic infections in domestic. This is the situations that we have in the European Union. Now, in Asia, as you know, the situation is quite complicated already. Uh, the disease spread very fast, terribly fast. I, I never can expect it that it will be spread so fast. But as you're going to see, the reasons are clear. When uh, we review together, you're going to see that the, in the conditions that some of these farms are producing peak is really a paradise for the African swine fever virus. Very recently, in the 2020, the virus also moved to the Oceani Oceanic uh, uh, continent, to the Oceania continent, with several islands that are already affected. Uh, as you know, the, 
the last, the, you know, in this 2020, we have New Guinea, Nueva Guinea, and also India. India became already also infected with ASF. The things that also su su uh, still uh, surprise me quite a lot is that they are, according with the information of several authors, you can see here, this is from the 2017, the, the population, the density population, the population density of wild boar in this area is very, very important. If you see, uh, they are in red color, so you can see how much wild boar is in this area. However, uh, the, the number of outbreaks that they reported already are only three. But if you look at to the European Union where we have less populations than the red one, we are yellow, so we have a lot of this outbreak uh, in, 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 in wild boar populations. 7,700 7, outbreak during 2016 to 2019. So that means that probably what we are seeing, these all big outbreaks that is already reported in Asia, only related with domestic, uh, still are going to have a lot in wild boar. And that could be very important also for the transmissions. And probably they are playing an important role in the transmission with other countries and, and this is something that we have to keep in mind. Why Asia is so wonderful paradise for ASF? Because there are some uh, traditions, some ways of education that they keep uh, some behaviors that are terribly, co terribly bad for the virus, for stop the virus. And this is like the ones that I'm going to tell you, that use the blood for feed animals, this is a tradition that in Asia is, especially in family farms and, you know, in backyard farms. Also use wheel feeding for feed the animal. This is also terrible because as you're going, I'm going to tell you, the virus is making a cycle, so this infected, this, this meat infected is consuming, they produce meat contaminated and against the use and the wheel feeding. So also because the lack the lack of uh, compensation to the farms that the farmers that are infected, this lack of compensations make that many people try, once that they are infected, they try to sell the, the, the animals that they still are alive. Uh, even they try to cook inside of the slaughterhouse. So that means that a lot of, of this meat is already contaminated. And in particular, it's very important to keep in mind that the blood is one of the most fantastic medium to transport the virus. Just in one drop of blood, the virus can have more than three million copies of the virus. So you can imagine how much concentrations can be, or how much concentration can be in a truck or in a vehicles that already has been transport infected animal. And, and that's happened in, in, in farms, mainly in low biosecurity farms, of course, there are many backyard, many families, uh, farms that they are really living at the house. And of course, there are also very wonderful and high biosecurity farm like this one. The problem in the low biosecurity is that they use, uh, as I mentioned before, for tradition, the soil feeding. They also take uh, blood to, to, to combine with the grain for feed the animals. They also try to sell, to sell uh, meat the contaminated, so that is the big problem for the for this continual rotations of the virus. In the high biosecurity, that, that's a much better. There are particular ones very good. That this one is one very secure uh, farms that uh, I, I saw it in China. But the other, the biggest problem that they have is because it's so large amount of animals in one of these farms when they have no break. They try to kill the, the old break, they sacrifice this animal, and, but they try to make up uh, the populations very quickly and start in production again. And that sometimes induce reinfections because you know that the populations need some time to start after many checkup, including sentinel animals. So the biggest problems that worries me at this moment in Asia is the cycle that the virus is having because the entrance of a lot of meat contaminated to the market. So this meat is, pr they, they produce products with this meat, with this meat, 
with this contaminated milk, and this product is used again uh, as field feeding, and so they, they have this ASF cycle that is continuing. And that's also the reasons why many countries that has been studied potential infection and product from some Asia country, they always find virus because there are quite a lot of virus in this, in this type of product. So with these uh, particular uh, scenarios that I just summarized for you, what do you think or how, for how long can we expect it that ASF will be around? I put my, my glass ball with you and to make you these uh, three different uh, scenarios and possibilities. In the case of we have a vaccine or in the case without vaccine. Later we're going to talk about how far away it's going to be a vaccine and what high probabilities, low probabilities we're going to have in relation for a commercial vaccine. But that is why I try to separate the three ideas and these three scenarios. Let's go to Africa first. In the, in the black one is the one with vaccine. So in the best case in Africa, especially East and South Africa, the disease is going to be unleashed for another 10 and 15 years, even with a good vaccine, with a safe vaccine. In the second scenario, Asia, in Asia and Oceania, we're going to have, in the case of a vaccine, the disease minimum five to six years. And that is what I expect with the vaccine. In the case of Europe, the situation is going to be much better because uh, Sardinia is already uh, free, it's going to be declared very soon. And the other part, we have two parts, the east part and the west part. In the east part, the situation is going to be a little more complicated, could be for two or six years, and even in some areas will be endemic, will be keeping endemic. In the situation of the European Union, the problem is only wild boar, and if we have a good vaccine and wild boar, probably will be make a very quick solutions of our threat about the ESF. The same happened in, in, in Oceania without vaccine. Many areas uh, as well in Asia could be endemic and the same in, in Africa. So you can see the difference go between 10 to 15 year, five to six, two to six in the best uh, scenarios. Let's go now to talk about the vaccine. Uh, as I told you, uh, still, is no commercial available vaccine, but uh, there is very important progress in the, in the potential production of this vaccine. I'm going to, to review for you why this progress happened and what is already the current situations of the potential of the vaccine, a commercial vaccine. We know already for many, many years, but even more in the last year that we did several experiments that inactivated vaccine doesn't work in African swine fever. There's no way to induce immunity in African swine fever with inactivated vac vaccine. We also knew from a long time ago, from the 60s, where the first vaccine has been used in, in, in Spain and in Portugal, that was an attenuated vaccine. We know from that time that the attenuated vaccine con can induce protection, and at least homologous protection. And that was important, uh, this government. But we also know that some of these attenuated vaccine can create side effect as well. That was the reasons why in the 60s, we uh, stopped the vaccination in both countries, in Portugal and in Spain. Today, we know that there are some attenuated vaccine that don't have these side effects problems. And this is very important. And, and for me, the attenuated vaccine is still are one of the most important candidates for a future vaccine. This, this attenuated vaccine can be two types, can be naturally attenuated, so like the ones that we are working with, is isolated one animal that survived perfectly to the disease with no person of virus in their tissue and totally immune, and that is a very important studies, but we also have the, the possibility to have a natural attenuated strain that can be also delayed of some of the virulent genes that we know already quite a lot about that. Because the knowledge of the vaccine ASF, of the ASF vaccine, is more related with the knowledge that we know about 
the, the virulent genes that about the immunoresponse itself. In the immunoresponse, we know that there are many mechanisms, humoral and cellular, involved in the protection of ASF. And it's important, all of these mechanisms. But we also know that the animals that can survive to the infection, especially with some attenuated uh, vaccine, naturally or not, uh, they, can, they can be protected to that in, in a very important way, in a very high population. And, 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 uh, and this is important. And the mechanism, as I told you, is a combination of humoral antibodies are important, even that they are not neutralizing, and, and also cellular immunity. But we don't know which proteins are the ones that induce this immune response. And that is the reasons why it's very difficult to immunize with the proteins alone or, or knowing exactly which proteins are the ones that are going to protect it. In the case of genetic, in the case of the genetic studies and the molecular studies, we, we have a much better knowledge. The last technologies show us a very number, a big number of genes involved in the virulence of the disease. And what does that mean? That means that if we remove the virulent genes, we're going to give the animals the chance enough to induce immunity. And this is what exactly today we think is going to be the future. The future are going to be attenuated, natural attenuated, that could be the latent or not of the genes, uh, their virulent genes. And the other pos possibility, very good possibility, will be the gene delayed vaccine. These are the two possibilities and the most important prototypes that at this moment we have in ASF. Already we know also that subunit vaccine doesn't work as well as DNA vaccine don't give it a very good protection. So once again, summarize attenuated vaccine, naturally attenuated, and perhaps delayed attenuated in case that will be needed for safety, and the gene delayed vaccine are the future in a, in, a, in a short period of time. One of the projects that is already working in some of these prototypes is the Bagdiva project. Bagdiva the project is a, a project founded by the European Union with 10,000 million, with, pardon, with, with 10 million euros. And, and this project has, uh, has, been, uh, uh, has been working for, it's going to work in, be working for the next years. It starts in November 2019. So in this project, as I told you, 10 different vaccine candidates are involved. What is the objective of these projects? The objective of these projects is to provide an effective and safe vaccine for wild boar and domestic pigs. This is also very important. Both are included in the projects. And we, in both cases, the vaccines will be DIVA vaccine. So that means that will make make easier to distinguish between vaccinated of infected animal. And finally, in the back DIVA projects, we also involve a very interesting program, an ASF control, eradication strategy, and different epidemiological scenarios. There are many, many different teams involved in Bactiva. We are 14 European Union teams from different countries, from Spain, from Holland, Netherlands, from Italy, from uh, Czech Republic, Estonia, Ger uh, Germany, Hungary, Latvia, also Lithuania, Portugal, and of course, uh, all of them in the European Union. So these 14 European teams, together with three teams from outside of Europe, we have colleagues from China involved, from Africa involved, the, the Ilri Institute of Kenya, and also from Russia, working together from these three prototypes. These three prototypes, that one of them is already in a trial, make an animal trial in wild boar, is the, the first oral vaccine for Eurasian wild boar. We also finished another experiment very recently that uh, we still don't have time to evaluate it very deeply, the results, but the, they are very, very good with no side effect at all and a very high protection in wild boar. What are the situation of these uh, prototypes? That is the one is working more quickly at this moment in the projects. We are doing uh, the genetic stability in vitro and in vivo, and m most of the studies are already done. We only need to continue one in vivo experiments. 
The overdoses immunizations in white old board is already done. The, the duration of immunity is still going because we have immunized animals, it's still going on. The immunization in domestic with a larger number of animals is already ongoing and, and it's uh, one of our partners working on there. The DIVA adaptation is ongoing, but I can tell you already that these uh, preliminary results are really very good. Immunization with the bait is already done. We proved that the animals can be immunized by bait and, and, and we already in the last experiments, all the immunizations was made by bait. We are working now on the conservation on different uh, scenarios of, of the bait. So how long can be the bait and one temperature with different um, humidity, etc. This project is already ongoing. What is the goal of all this study, all this research? Well, what we want to have a world free of ASF. This is absolutely our dream and I, I really believe that we can make it. So our goal to have a world free of ASF. And that's all. So I would like to give my knowledge to the European Union for founding this research, as well to our uh, ASF team that you can see on the picture, and to all of you for your attention. And I hope you enjoy this presentation and I can uh, give it to you some key points to clarify the situations of the present and the future. Thank you, thank you very, very much. <laughs>